In this video, we'll talk about eosinophil and its role in immunity. Eosinophil plays a vital role in terms of immunity against parasites. It was first discovered and described by Paul Elrich in 1879 and he noticed the unusual capacity of this cell to be stained with acidophilic dyes. They play a vital role against parasites and they are involved in modulating allergic response. Eosinophils constitute 1% of the circulating leukocytes, whereas the majority are the neutrophils, which are more than 50% of the time. But eosinophils are involved in allergic responses and other infections. Relatively few mature eosinophils are found in the peripheral blood and generally they are found in specific locations in the gut and other locations where they maintain the homeostasis. Let's talk about the development of the eosinophil. Eosinophil is formed from the hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell which give rise to myeloid progenitor and from the myeloid progenitor eosinophils are generated. Once generated, they are secreted into the bloodstream, but inside the bloodstream, they only stay for about 18 hours. They move to tissues like thymus or the GI tract, and they play a vital role in these particular locations. So let's talk about some cellular features of eosinophil. So first of all, let's talk about the microscopic features. So in the uh, hematoxylin eosin stain, we can see these eosinophil to be stained with uh, this kind of pink stain. You can see characteristic bilobed nucleus and a lot of cytoplasmic granules. If we look at the ultrastructure of the eosinophil, we can also appreciate the bilobed nucleus and the electron dense cytoplasmic granules. Question is, what is there inside these cytop uh, cytoplasmic granules? What is the content of these granules? In a moment, we would get to know that. So let's talk about the molecular features. So first of all, let's talk about these granule contents because granules constitute a majority of the cytoplasmic content in eosinophil. So there are many proteins such as major basic protein, MBP1 and 2, eosinophil cationic protein ECP, eosinophil peroxidase EPX and eosinophil derived neurotoxin EDN. So these are the four major components of the, cyto uh, the, the cytoplasmic granules. Other than that there is cytokine, there is other CLC GAL10 protein and in response to many stimuli these contents are actually released. But what we have to understand these four major proteins are really important in terms of Neutro, uh, eosinophils function. In subsequent uh, slides, we would understand why they are important. Let's talk about the surface receptors a little bit. But before that, let me tell you, other than these uh, cytotoxic granules, there are proteins such as cytokines. Various interleukins are secreted by these eosinophils. There are growth factors which are secreted by eosinophils. Chemokines and enzymes are also present in these eosinophils. In terms of the surface molecule, we can see there are different categories of surface receptors such as cytokine receptors, such as pattern recognition receptors, various TLRs and PRRs are there. FC receptor is also there. Adhesion receptors such as integrin receptors are present on the surface. There are chemokine receptors and receptors for lipid mediators like leukotrienes, prostaglandins, etc. Now there are also primary granules and lipid bodies. Let's talk about the immune function of eosinophil. Eosinophil as mentioned before plays vital role in terms of destruction of parasites. They also play allergic response, I mean they also play vital role in modulating the overall allergic response along with mast cells and other responses. So all the eosinophil derived proteins are involved in various kind of immune response against various kinds of pathogens. Such as, if we think about anti-helminth response, antibacterial response, antiviral and Im immune modulatory response, we would see that EPX, ECP and MBP, these three proteins, which are the major constituents of the cytoplasmic granules, they are involved in anti-helminth or anti-parasite response. Now, for antibacterial response, ECP and MBP are responsible. For antiviral response, ECP and EDN are res responsible. Similarly, there are many components which can modulate immune cells. And also there are components which can activate epithelial cells and 
uh, change their homeostasis. So eosinophil level goes down in various situations such as Cushing syndrome, usage of corticosteroids and in bacteremia. And eosinophil levels goes up in situations like asthma, allergy, parasitic infection, etc. So let's try to understand the role of eosinophil in disease or eosinophilia or increase in eosinophil number in context of disease. So the normal number is 0 to 500. Beyond that, it is eosinophilia and beyond 1500 cells per microliter is basically hyper eosinophilia. So in allergic rhinitis, eosinophilic esophagitis, food allergy, we can see there is a eosinophilia like situation. That means the number goes beyond 500. Same condition goes for asthma, atopic dermatitis, bolus, etc. But in case of nasal polyposis, eosinophil gastritis, in these cases, the eosinophilia is pretty severe and almost it reaches the hyper eosinophilia stage. And this is true for chronic helminth infection as well. In case of several cancers such as eosinophil leukemias, we can see hyper eosinophilia like situation. Now eosinophil has a huge role in terms of immune modulation because eosinophil can interact with various immune cells such as macrophages, neutrophil, dendritic cells, B cells, mast cells and Th2 cells. And eosinophil derived factors such as MBP can modulate neutrophil and activate neutrophil to secrete several other stuff. Also it can modulate dendritic cell and lead to dendritic cell activation. So that is why eosinophil derived factors are really important in context of overall immune modulation. So this is a function that is beyond fighting the parasites or getting involved in allergy. So it has a bigger implication in terms of biology. So in summary, we learned these eosinophils are usual, usually linked with allergic responses such as asthma or any kind of atopic dermatitis allergy. They contain acidophilic granules which are filled up of specific proteins. We looked at the names, their functions, etc. So eosinophil level changes in disease. They could go up or they could go low in specific diseases. We looked at them and eosinophil's interaction with immune system brings out the bigger implications and biology of the eosinophil's function. So you can get many flashcards and notes in my Facebook page. So all the links are provided in the description. Also follow me on Instagram. You can get these kind of notes and flashcards in Instagram as well. You can support my channel using a Patreon, PayPal, or you can click on the super thanks option. By clicking on the super thanks option, you can pay via net banking, Paytm, PayPal, or UPI. Your small contribution means a lot for me. It would help me to bring out more quality content for free education. You can get, uh, get connected with us using social media. All the social media links are provided in the description. See you in the next video.